Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, I've got some good news. I've been asked to be a distinguished scientist in residence in the College of Engineering at Marquette University. They've got an amazing facility there. They've got a, a virtual environment. Um, they're doing research and creating projects in virtual reality, augmented reality, virtual environments. And um, they've asked me to create content for several of their projects. It's really an amazing facility. So I will be doing that over the next several months. The not so good news, I guess, is that I won't be posting to YouTube as much as I have been. But I do hope to be able to post updates and progress on some of the projects I'll be working on. So it's really an honor for me to be able to do this, and I'm really looking forward to it. I began last week, and uh, will continue on for the next several months uh, full-time. I haven't had a lot of experience yet in virtual reality and virtual environments, but I don't know that a lot of people have, so I'm looking forward to learning a lot about it and hopefully bringing much of that information back here to YouTube. So I'll keep you posted on how that all goes. But what I'd like to do here today is try and finish up the major parts of the texturing and the materials. And I think the last couple parts for this is to add subsurface scattering to the skin, which is just here on the face, and also give him some eyes. Um, it looks like in the reference images I have, he's got blue eyes. So I've created a texture map that I'd like to add to his eyes. What I've done is I've created uh, on layer two this kind of test scene. And what I'm doing here is shining a spotlight through the back or at the back of this object. And as we create a subsurface scattering shader, we should be able to see some of the light come through this part here. And the subsurface scattering is like the light that would come through your ears if the light was shining behind you or if you put your hand over a flashlight and how the light goes into the hand and kind of scatters. So since Captain Quark doesn't have any ears that we can test this on, I figured I'd go ahead and set up a scene like this to do the testing and then apply the skin shader to Captain Quark. So let's go over here to the rendering screen layout that we created some time ago. And let me get this over here. I probably don't need this right now. And I'll just frame this up and I'll turn on the rendering viewport shading. I'm going to take this object and I'll go ahead and assign that skin material to it. So I'll pull out the material menu here and assign the skin. And now let's work on setting up the node editor so we can get some of that light coming through this thinner part of the object. What I'm going to do is kind of mix a couple of subsurface scattering nodes together and also mix those with the diffuse shader that we already have here. So I'll press shift A and go to shader and subsurface scattering. And I'll add one here and let's go ahead and just duplicate this with shift D and add and bring that down here. I'll make this one a kind of a a red color. I'm going to press control up arrow to make this a little bit bigger. And maybe down here I'll make this kind of a yellowish color because our skin really has some different colors in it. So I'll go ahead and mix this. I'll grab a mix shader and bring these into here. And then I'll mix these two up here like this. I'll press control up arrow again. And now if I take this light right here and I need to increase the strength of it, it's pretty low. I'm going to take it up to like 30,000, something like that. There you go. And now you can begin to see that for the thinner parts of the object, the light behind it is actually showing through. So I think what I want to do is I want to bring that other light back. So let me uh, grab this light over here. 
this one here. And I'll bring it over to layer two by pressing M and two. And let's go back over there. So now I've got this light shining on this object. And you can see how that light is kind of passing through the thinner parts. And that's good. That's what I want. But it's a little too yellow, I think. So perhaps I'll drag the factor here that's between the red and the yellow. See, if I drag it this way, I get all the red, and I drag it this way, I get all the yellow. So maybe I'll take it down to like 0.3, something like that. So I have a little bit of red tint in the skin there. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. Now, there is, of course, more we can do here. I can take this factor all the way to the skin or all the way over to the subsurface scattering, and maybe I'll bring it... Maybe I'll bring it down to around 0.6, something like that. All right, so I think that looks pretty good. Let's go back to layer one. I'm gonna grab my light here and move it back to layer one. And I'll go back here and let's take a look at how he looks. And there we go. So there's, of course, more we could do there. We can come down here now that the skin shader is on him right here we could come in here and do a little more tweaking and you can of course add an actual texture to this an image texture in addition to the subsurface scattering so that just adds a little bit of life to the skin of your character all right so let's take a look at the eyes now if we come in here and i'm going to select one of these eyes right here Let's take a look at this. I'm going to switch to Solid Shade, and I'll zoom in to that eye. And if I go over to the Modifiers panel, I can see I've got a Mirror Modifier on this. And for now, I'm just going to take that off. So he's just one-eyed now. I'll go ahead and tab into Edit Mode and then select all of the faces of the eye. And now we can see our UV map. So what we need to do is bring in a texture and put it in place on our UV map. To do that, I'm going to press Shift A, go to Texture and Image Texture. We're going to do this based on a UV map. So I'll press Shift A and in Input, I'll grab the texture coordinates and I'll bring the UV into here. I'll bring the color channel into the color of the diffuse shader. And then I'll go grab my image. Now I've made an image and I've put it in my textures folder, this eye color here. It's just an eyeball with an alpha channel behind it. That's all it is. So I'll open that up and bring that in. And I'll bring that into here by choosing it here. So there we go. Now, it doesn't look like anything's happened here in the render view. But actually what it is, is that the iris, or excuse me, the pupil is so big that it's covering the entire eye. So what we need to do is scale up this UV map here. And then you can begin to see it over here. So that's pretty good if we center it up there that's pretty good except we've got a problem here it's repeating we can come over here and change this repeat right here from repeat to clip and that will help that out but the problem is now the white of our eye isn't showing through but we know how to fix that because we did the same thing with the logo so what we need to do, instead of having the image come straight into the diffuse here, let's add it to this diffuse shader. Let's create a new one here. There we go. Let's go ahead and mix the two with a mix shader, like so. And then let's bring the alpha right here into the factor of that mix shader. And there we go. Now if we switch them, you can see 
that's what happens. So the order in which you have them does make a difference. Now we can begin to scale this in or out to make it the size that we need it to be. Now I like to kind of look at it from the side here. Kind of like this and I like to have that little black rim extend just slightly around the edge of that flat part. So maybe something like that. It's kind of hard to see but I think maybe something like that. And alright he's looking pretty good. So there we've got the eye textures on him and a little bit of subsurface scattering for the skin. Well, if you've been following along with Captain Quark here, thank you so much for watching. As I said, I won't be able to publish as much as I have been, but I do hope to keep you updated periodically on the work I'm doing. Thanks again for watching, and take care. Blender fans assemble. It's time to create Captain America's motorcycle using hard surface modeling techniques in Blender. In this online course, you'll learn the tools and processes of modeling a complex, realistic vehicle. We'll use reference images taken of the motorcycle from the first Captain America movie on display at the Harley Davidson Museum. We'll build the bike up from the frame, assembling each piece using different Blender tools along the way. And we'll even go over setting up materials and lighting for a final render. This course is available at Blender101.com, where you'll also get my Blender Scene Creation course, the course that takes you through the entire process of creating an animated scene in Blender from the first polygon to the final rendered movie. And if you're just starting out with Blender, you'll also get the course Blender 101 Introduction to 3D Modeling, an in-depth course that covers the fundamentals of modeling in Blender. And at Blender101.com, you get new courses and projects every month. So join me as we create Captain America's motorcycle at Blender101.com. It's Blender for everyone.